10 rapid fire tactics to improve your brain performance, your brain speed, and your overall focus. I've got Luisa Nicola here, who is a neurophysiologist. She works with some of the most elite professional athletes, Wall Street executives, all when it comes down to harnessing that focus and that brain power. Mm. So if we're just kind of ready to jump in like what are some quick things people can do to optimize their brain performance and today's video is sponsored by seed if you're worried about your gut microbiome you're trying to make some changes but ultimately if you're trying to add carbohydrates back into your diet after doing low carb for a long time very important you take care of your microbiome so that link down below saves you 25 percent off of seeds daily symbiotic which has a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. So a capsule inside of a capsule. Super interesting technology. Very, very cool to check out. So they also fund a lot of microbiome research. So they put their money where their mouth is. A lot of the proceeds go back into research because we're trying to understand what these little microbes in our gut do and how important they are. So anyhow, it makes a big difference, it made a big difference for me. I don't usually recommend probiotics because a lot of them are garbage, but this one's definitely worth a shot. So that link down below is in the top line of the description for seed. Number one is get two tennis balls and start practicing hand-eye coordination drills. What this is gonna do is it's actually gonna fire your neural patterns. So we do this pre-game. So I've been known to be back in like a an MBA locker room just playing, you know, with the balls with my guys and that's actually activating the neural system. So it's a really great way to fire up your brain. So is that something that someone could do like even pre-workout like if they're pre-workout even um, a lot of our wall street executives are also doing it just get two tennis balls and start just rapidly like throwing them to the wall it actually involves so much more than just hand-eye coordination interesting almost yeah. works as a pre-workout i'd imagine it wakes you up a lot too it wakes you up it gets you fired up it gets you excited it gets you focused just don't throw them at the cubicle next to you definitely don't throw them <laughs> at the cubicle next to you um, and that actually leads into my second point one thing that we say at Neuroathletics is if you want to get an athlete to perform better at any skill, get them to do it with their eyes closed. So we forget that we lose a lot of our skill acquisition because of our eyes, because we're, we're able to sense a lot of things. So if you want to get better at anything, even if it is a squat or a pull up, blindfold yourself or close your eyes or maybe put on the eye patch and do it with your eyes closed. It doesn't matter what skill you're doing other than driving, blindfold yourself and <laughs> and um, and do that skill. It, it's absolutely amazing. Wow, interesting. I imagine that. I mean, it probably heightens a lot of the other senses too. Like yeah. even if you're a resistance training and you know you visualize, okay, I'm holding a barbell, I'm holding dumbbells. You know, we always talk, or Arnold Schwarzenegger used to talk about that mind-muscle connection. Yeah. And it's like, as you get older, sometimes it's harder to get that connection. Like when I was in my 20s, it felt like I could lift dumbbells and like, I could really like, oh, I feel my biceps. Now it's like, I feel my biceps for two seconds and then I'm thinking about emails and then I'm thinking about everything else. And it's like, maybe if, maybe if I had one sensory just wiped out, it would make me connect a little bit more. Yeah, that's actually what it is. It's like getting rid of one, one of the sensory mechanisms, just like completely blindfolding yourself. And then the other ones work harder. Interesting. Yeah, it actually works the same for um, if you put ear earplugs in. Actually, one of the one of the best things that we do, we can call this the the third um, thing that you can be doing to improve brain performance is we do this sensory deprivation breath work. So we get our athletes to sit down and practice their breath work, but with earplugs in and with a blindfold on. Hmm. Yeah. So they're really just focusing on the breath work because you've probably tried this. If you've tried to meditate, how many things can you hear? Or sometimes you, you, you can probably see things, maybe you wanna open up your eyes. It just stops you from doing that if you've got a blindfold on and if your ears are completely blocked out. Interesting, and you probably like internally, like you know when your ears are plugged, it's like you hear your breath more? You hear your breath more, yeah. Yeah, you probably like just internalize that a little bit more. Absolutely. There's a lot of uh, recent science that's starting to come out on sensory deprivation altogether. Like it seems like, like people are building sensory deprivation rooms that are like totally like silent. And I just, mm. I find it fascinating. I kind of want to build one here. Yeah, you definitely should. It's like getting into a hyperbaric oxygen chamber as well. Like, wow. And just like completely like depriving yourself of everything and just taking in that 100% rich oxygen. Nice. And it's not, I guess it's not the same as like, you know, noise canceling headphones, you still pick stuff out and there's pick stuff out and there's almost like a, like a frequency that goes with it. It's like, so you mean you recommend just like straight up earplugs, like try to block up as much noise? Earplug, uh, face mask or eye mask and just completely block out the noise and try and do that for 10 minutes. Set a timer. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's number four? 
Number four is at five minutes of super high intensity training. So you're aware of zones. You've got zone two, zone three, zone four. So we, we generally work in four zones at Neuroathletics. Some people work in five. So our fourth zone is our most compass, like when you're at your absolute capacity. So, um, you know, you can be, let's just say you're working at about 95% of your maximum heart rate. If you are able to do that, we actually get a lot of our execs to do this at around 2 p.m. So when they're feeling a slump in their brain performance, we get them to do five minutes of super high anaerobic training and it brings their heart rate up. It gets all this blood flow going to the brain, all this oxygen going to the brain, and it's actually like a stimulant. You feel incredibly invigorated and awake. So if you're looking for anything outside of the realm of caffeine or, or drugs, it, it would be getting into that high, high cardiac output phase. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Number five. So number five, creatine. Creatine's probably been the best thing that I have implemented for my brain and my brain energy over the last year. So I'm having five grams of creatine per day. Interesting. And people notice a pretty quick impact with that? Oh, 100%. I generally like to have it within a 90 minute time frame of exercise. So I do it before I'm going to do training, but even if I'm not exercising, some people are not exercising every single day, still have your creatine. It does wonders for brain endurance, cognitive capacity, even brain function. Interesting. Yeah. So um, creatine and then making sure that you're obviously ingesting a lot of water when you're having your creatine as well. Okay, what's, okay so we got five now, so what's yep. number six? One thing that I've started to implement is binaural beats, but also I'm implementing, I've started listening to brown noise when I'm working. And mainly because I've mentioned before, our brain doesn't like distractions and it's easily susceptible to distractions. So what I find is when I'm deep in work and I'm writing and I'm setting myself 90 minutes to write, I supplement that with brown noise. And it kind of, it kind of feels like you're on an airplane. I don't know if you've ever listened to brown noise, mm -hmm. but it gets me super focused. And in fact, there's actually a lot of um, research that's going into showing that people with ADHD are getting prescribed an hour or two a day of brown noise. Whoa. Yeah. You know, an interesting thing that's happened to me with brown noise is I've always like little, you know, white noises and various noises that I'll put on like to drown out uh, noise when I sleep, right? Well, it's funny, for a couple of weeks, I had been turning on like brown noise on my phone. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Like it drowns out a lot of noise. But I was like noticing that I was like, waking up a lot with it and like feeling like just ready to go mm. not to mention was having trippy dreams and like wow i can't link anything to it but then it kind of connect i connected the dots when i started looking into it i was like maybe brown noise isn't the best one for me to choose for sleep because i started like applying it during the day and i could get really focused so i don't have any literature to back it up but having it like playing next to my bed didn't work for sleep. Okay, <laughs> was, yeah. So which showed me that, okay, it's definitely exactly how you're describing. It helps yeah. me focus. Yeah. The dreams were trippy. And when I stopped using it, everything went back to normal. So whatever anecdotal response that is, it's worth mentioning. Absolutely. I, I completely agree, but it's done wonders for me. All right. So uh, what's number seven then? So we do this great skill with our athletes. And you have to think of an athlete, let's think of a, a Formula One driver being able, having to react to you know everything around them we do this great game and it's basically called the the word game it's a it's basically so what we do is we get a set of lights and the reaction training lights and we set them a task and the task may be if the light is purple we give them a letter we, we give them a letter t if the light is purple you have to think of a word starting with the letter t if the light is green we maybe get them to jump or react to it. So what they're doing is they're not just having to look in their brain and figure out language processing. You know, we've got an area in our brain that's involved in uh, the formation of words. And it actually gets, it's very hard to do this, to think of many different words starting with the letter T on demand. And what we find is if we get them to just sit still right now, you'd probably be able to give me 10 or 20 words starting with the letter T. But the moment that you add a stressor or add something which is reacting to the light, you start to forget those words. So being able, and it basically helps them to manage 
themselves, their emotions under pressure. So being able to find those words while reacting to the light, while also thinking about what color is the next light going to be, it's putting so much neural demand and pressure on their brain that they have to perform anyway. Nice. That's yeah. actually a really cool one. So if you don't have reaction lights at home, but you can do this in any way, you can just set yourself a task. You know, you can just set yourself a task like every minute that goes off or every second, like think of a different number, think of a different letter, and you'll find that it places a lot of cognitive load on your brain. Whoa, that's really interesting. I'm gonna think of that when I go. And you could probably just like, I'm sure you can even get like timer apps and things like that on your phone that'll probably flash certain colors so you don't need to go get yeah, reaction lights. Absolutely. Um, the next one I would say is one that we will all heard of is sleep, but really figuring out if you treat sleep like it's a sport and think about sleep fitness, Give yourself a give yourself a 14 day sleep fitness journey and do what you can. If you wear a tracker at home, see how you can be improving on your sleep every single night. That's looking at your deep sleep and looking at your REM sleep scores. And if you can try and increase those every night and try and become a sleep you know, Olympian, if you will, it will do wonders for your brain performance. What about what about power naps? Power naps are okay. The only way that I would tell you to implement a power nap is if you don't, if you, if you've had maybe six hours sleep. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to take away from the sleep pressure. We want to ensure that you're sleeping at night. If you have a nap, and maybe you may not feel tired at night, you may not want to fall asleep. So power naps are great. Keeping them at maybe twenty minutes or thirty minutes if you can to get yourself back up and, and perform good. Yeah. Have you uh, have you heard of like the, the caffeine nap hack kind of thing? I have. Is there, I mean, I know, I know there's mechanistic like. Nappuccino? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know there's like mechanistic proof behind it, if you want to call it that. But what's your, I'm just curious your personal take on it. No, I love it. I, I tend to try and do things that are outside of the realm of any, anything like caffeine. I never want to have to rely on caffeine or anything, but I would say that it's, it's generally it's generally a good mechanism. I mean, mechanistically, it makes sense. I just yeah. feel like I would get anxiety because if you don't fall asleep within that window of time, like you take caffeine, mm -hmm. and the goal is to be able to like fall asleep before you really get caffeine hits you. It's like I'd just be sitting there and be like, ah, oh, no, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, and then miss it, right? Absolutely. So, all right. So we're getting down to the end here. What's number nine? cold water immersion. And it doesn't have to be in an actual ice bath. You can do this by implementing a two minute cold shower per day and then increasing it as you you know, become more accustomed to that cold. But that's probably, probably been the best thing that I've implemented into my routine to increase my vigilance and my focus. If someone doesn't have like a shower handy, let's say they're at the office and they're about to go into a really important meeting and they're just feeling off their game, like. Could they theoretically like just go splash a bunch of cold water on their face and will that do a little bit of something? Like does just a little bit of cold, like the mammalian effect kind of hitting water, hitting your face? Yeah, actually a really great thing that we, we do with some of our guys is if you just hold ice, yeah, you can actually you can actually cool down your entire body. There's um, there's wonderful studies done on this um, where you can cool down your entire body just by wearing like cold mitts, or if you just hold a cold block of ice, for example. So if you are, you know, if you've got an office and you do have, you know, ice handy or something, there's always like frozen peas in there. Just go and hold them, and it actually cools down your entire body. Interesting. And that's, yeah. I mean, that alone, just kind of having that cooling effect is probably mm. calming as well. It's actually funny because one thing that we implemented um, as an experiment for people who, um, who don't have bathtubs or who don't want to get into a cold shower, you can actually put f like four bowls of water in the freezer. And before it gets frozen, if you just put your feet in them and put your hands in them and just sit there, you'll notice it's an experiment. I've done it. It can cool down your entire body and have somewhat the same effects as um, a cold bath. That's wild. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. When you get in a like a cold plunge, it's funny because like the hardest part is getting your hands and feet in. Like you, you typically jump in with your feet or whatever, and then like you see a lot of people, it's like the hands kind of like flutter out. Like I don't want to put them in. I don't want to put them in. And then yeah. when you like it, like just completes it, where it's like once the hands are in, yeah. it's a different level. It's such a different level. Yeah. All right. So number ten, it'd be interesting to hear your take on one that maybe like if you know you just had a like super stressful experience, or maybe you're about to go speak in front of a bunch of people, or you've got a really stressful meeting. Like mm. I know I run pretty hot anxiety wise, and like my heart rate will start going. I've even was prescribed beta blockers at one point for public speaking, which I, I you know only took a couple of times. I didn't like how they made me feel. But is there a way to get that sort of 
calming effect? What would you recommend yeah. there? So what you're asking is how can we best get in a short amount of time more oxygen into our body to activate the parasympathetic state, which is the rest and digest and how can we calm ourselves down? One thing that we do with our athletes is we get them to lay on the ground. And we do this like during their sets. So if they are running, okay, for example, if we do track sessions each week. If they're going out, they're doing a, a one mile track session at maximum heart rate. Instead of just walking around and like calming themselves down, we get them to lay on the ground on their back and like bring their heart rate down. It's actually a faster way to bring your heart rate down than just standing there on the spot. And what I think is happening there is you're mimicking that you're asleep. You're basically telling your brain, okay, I'm laying down, I'm asleep. But it's actually seen, like in the scientific literature to show that that's the best way to bring your heart rate down in the fastest way possible. Interesting. So even if you are about to go on stage, if you can find a way to do some deep breathing work in a laying down position, maybe close your eyes, it'll be much better than trying to do it standing up. The only problem is then you run the risk of falling asleep. Yeah, I exactly. just wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's perfect. So we got 10 real quick rapid fire ways. So Louisa, where can everyone find you? Um, on Instagram at Louisa Nicola, or if they can listen to my podcast, which is The Neuro Experience. Beautiful. Well, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. And Louisa, thank you so much. Thank you.